Hi everybody, this is Lara with your end of the week video for gold for the trading week ending Friday 26th of April. For the very short term, it looks like this bounce is going to continue. It may end possibly about 1294 or if it gets high enough, it could again test resistance at the upper edge of the base channel. If that happens, it'll be very, very likely to end there. If there's a downward trend, as I expect there is now for gold, then bounces are opportunities to join the trend. The next Elliott Wave target is at 1220, which is just $3 off the classic analysis target at 1217, and risk is just above the upper edge of the base channel. Elliott Wave analysis first, as usual this week, classic analysis last for gold. I still have three wave counts at the weekly chart level because I think we're dealing with an Elliott Wave triangle, and I've learned the hard way over many years now to always be suspicious of Elliott Wave triangles, always consider an alternate wave count when you think an Elliott Wave triangle is unfolding, or even when you think it's complete as I do for this one here. This triangle has a perfect fit though, it's a very common pattern, it's the most common type of triangle, and it's unfolded in the most common way, so this has a good probability in terms of Elliott Wave, and that's how I rank my different Elliott Wave counts. I look at the most common structure, that being the most likely, less common structures being less likely, and then within the structure, if it's unfolded in the most common way and doesn't have any problems in terms of subdivisions, the wave count will have a higher probability, and I rank my different wave counts in terms of main and then different alternates, usually in order. That's a general approach to Elliott Wave. Okay, this wave count sees a five wave structure complete down here. I'm labelling this cycle wave A. I do not think the bear market is over for gold. And I'm labelling a possibly complete triangle here for cycle B. It's a regular contracting triangle. That's the most common type of triangle. And triangles are reasonably common structures to turn up in a B wave position. Within this triangle, it's unfolded with a single zigzag for primary waves A and B, a double zigzag for primary C. One of the five subwaves of an Elliott wave triangle should subdivide as a multiple, and the most common subwave to do so is wave C. Here, we are seeing this triangle unfold in the most common way. There is a single zigzag down for D and now complete for E, which has fallen a little short of the AC trend line, and that is the most common way for an E wave to end. So this wave count looks absolutely perfect, and that's actually what gold tends to do, one reason why I like analysing it so much. It's very satisfying analytically, because of all the markets I analyse, because it's got the greatest volume, it will produce the most typical textbook looking Elliott wave structures. I'm now expecting a five wave structure down for a cycle degree C wave to most likely unfold as an impulse. That is by far the most common of the two structural possibilities for a C wave and the other one is an ending diagonal. The most common Fibonacci ratio for C to exhibit to A would be that of equality and so the third target from an Elliott wave perspective would have the highest probability. I have three targets and this is how I'm going to approach it. As price approaches the first target, I will look to see if the structure of cycle C could be complete. If it could be complete and price ends around the first target and bounces up around there, then I'll label cycle C as possibly complete. But if price keeps falling through the first target or if it gets there and the structure is incomplete, then attention will turn to the second target and the same process on down to the third target. I will have a really great level of confidence in this wave count and these targets at the weekly chart level. If we see a new low by any amount at any time frame in coming weeks below this price point, and when I show you the alternate wave counts, that will give you a clear understanding of exactly why. And that's another good reason to use alternate wave counts when you do Elliott Wave. When you're alternate wave counts or some of your many wave counts are invalidated by price, it gives you a little bit more clarity as to which is the remaining wave counts, whatever's left, is going to be right or more likely. Okay, let's take a look now at the daily chart level from the high of cycle B, this point here. A cycle degree wave in a new direction should start with a pretty clear five wave structure at the daily chart level. We have this here, I'm labelling it minor wave one. We have a double zigzag complete here for minor wave 2, that's a pretty common structure. 
double zigzags are fairly common Elliott wave corrective structures. And now minor wave 3 may have begun here, it must unfold as an impulse. Third waves are very often extended and when they extend in terms of price they also do so in terms of time and their subdivisions turn up at higher time frames. Here within the impulse of minor 3 we can see minute 1, minute 2, here's another double zigzag, shows up clearly at the daily chart level. When we get to minute 4 I'll expect that also might show up at the daily chart level. I'm drawing a base channel around this beginning impulse downward from the start of minor 1 to the end of minor 2 with a parallel copy on the end of minor 1. Lower degree second wave corrections usually, or almost always for gold but not always, almost always will find in a bear market resistance at the upper edge of those base channels. Here minute wave 2 did that, it found resistance just a little bit below this trend line. If this current bounce from minuet wave 2 is higher and stronger than I am expecting, look out if it does get close to this trend line then the probability of it ending about there will be quite high. Now that's not a certainty, there is nothing that is 100% certain in Elliott wave or any form of technical analysis. We are dealing here with a balance of probabilities. If there was something that was certain we'd all be billionaires and sadly we're not. Minuet, sorry, minute wave 3 also must subdivide as an impulse and it's quite likely to be extended and if it's extended its second wave particularly and maybe also its fourth wave corrections may show up here at the daily chart level. So this is a really typical look for the start of a third wave here at minor degree. Let's take a look now at the hourly chart level where minuet 1 is a slowdown here. I'm labelling minuet 2 as a possibly incomplete double zigzag. There are a couple of expanding diagonals in here which that's not problematic but they're not a very common Elliott wave structure but I have taken quite some time to consider different structural possibilities here at the hourly chart level for minuet wave 2. As it continues higher, and I don't think the structure is complete, I am unable to see a complete structure at this high back here, so I am expecting it to continue higher. As it does, my labelling within it may well change. I've also taken some time to try and draw a channel around Minuet Wave 2 that contains all of this movement to be as conservative as possible. If or rather the when we see a full hourly candlestick below and not touching the lower edge of this channel then that channel will be telling us that there's been a potential trend change. But for now I am expecting the bounce to continue next week. The first place I'd look for it to end would be the upper edge of this best fit channel and if price moves above this trend line then the next place I'd expect Minuet 2 to end would be the 0.618 Fibonacci ratio of minuet wave 1 and again if it doesn't end there the next place, the final place, would be the upper edge of the best fit channel on the daily chart and we looked at that in the last chart. And so use that upper edge of the best fit channel on the daily chart as your final guide to where this bounce may continue up to next week. And when that's over I am expecting a third wave at 2 degrees to begin. They can sometimes begin quite strongly and then they may accelerate toward the middle and explode toward the end. Toward the end of minute waves 3 and or minor wave 3 I am still expecting explosive downward movement as quite likely now it's not a certainty, it's just a possibility that I am warning to look out for. The target remains the same, this is the most common Fibonacci ratio for a third wave to exhibit to a first wave. If my target is wrong it may not be low enough. Third waves for gold can be quite extended. The next target calculation would be 2.618 but we'll see how the structure is unfolding as it approaches this target and I may have to calculate a lower target for you. At the weekly chart level, this is the next idea for cycle wave B, what if it wasn't over here as a triangle? What if what I think is a perfect looking Elliott wave triangle is the wrong wave count? What else could it be? Like I said it's really important to always consider alternates. 
Here my alternate idea is considering what if cycle wave B is a double corrective structure rather than a single. It may be a double zigzag, the first zigzag and the double could be seen as complete over here labelled primary wave W. The double should be joined by a corrective structure in the opposite direction labelled X and here primary wave X may be subdividing as a triangle which could be incomplete. When the triangle is complete, this wave count would then expect a second corrective structure to complete the double to be labelled primary wave Y and to most likely be a zigzag so that cycle B is most likely to be a double zigzag. Let's turn our attention now to this potential incomplete triangle for primary X. It's a regular contracting triangle, that's the most common type of triangle. It subdivides with a single zigzag for A, a double zigzag for B, Remember one of the five subwaves of an Elliott wave triangle should subdivide as a multiple. It's most commonly wave C but it doesn't have to be. It can be any other wave and sometimes wave B will subdivide as a multiple. This is not the most common triangle subwave to be a multiple however so the probability of this wave count has to be judged just by this alone to be slightly lower at least a little than the first wave count. There's a single zigzag for C and D and now a zigzag down for E is expected to continue to subdivide 5, 3, 5 and to most likely fall short of the AC trend line. The rule for wave E of a triangle is absolutely black and white for an Elliott wave triangle. It may not move beyond the end of C, not even a fraction of a cent on a tick chart. If this wave count is invalidated by a new low below this price point, that would add further confidence to my preferred wave count. That's how I'm using invalidation points for my Elliott wave counts. Let's take a look now at the final idea at the weekly chart level. What if gold has been in a basing action for the last three or so years? What if the bear market is over? This big wave down here, my main wave counts are seeing as five wave structures but it is also possible to see it as a complete corrective structure. It will subdivide as a double zigzag and to look at how I'm seeing those subdivisions you can view my monthly charts which I link to at the beginning every day of my articles. If the bear market is over for gold and a new bull, bull market is beginning then the first wave for gold must subdivide as a five wave structure but this has a really low probability because this upward movement does not fit well as all, at all as a five wave structure and here's the problem it's the size in terms of price covered and duration for primary wave 4 compared to primary wave 2 Primary wave 2 covers a much shorter distance in terms of price and it's very brief lasting only a week, actually a week and a half. Primary wave 4 lasts several weeks, I think it's over 12 and it covers a much greater distance in terms of price. It does not look right to label these a second and a fourth wave. Now it's okay to see it the other way around, a quick shallow fourth wave and a deep time consuming second wave because of the tendency of commodities to exhibit swift strong fifth waves which is especially prevalent for their fifth waves to end their third wave impulses. When they do that it forces the fourth wave correction that comes immediately after to be more brief and shallow due to a strong tendency in the trend direction. The fourth wave is brief and shallow, the second wave is more time consuming and often quite deep for commodities. That's a very normal look for a commodity impulse. This is absolutely not a normal look for a commodity impulse. This wave count to me looks absolutely forced. It's really only published each day to consider what if, I mean what if I've just got it wrong, what else could be happening, what if gold is in a bull market. And in doing so, in trying to come up with this kind of alternate wave count, what we're doing in terms of Elliott wave is also trying to figure out what is the probability in terms of Elliott wave of gold being in a bull market. Well if the wave count just doesn't fit then you have to judge the probability as being quite low. Well the wave count will fit, we can force all sorts of Elliott wave counts to fit but it does not follow a normal behaviour for this market, it has a low probability. Here's another problem with this wave count, 
And there's no problem here for the structure of cycle two. I'm seeing it as a double combination, but the problem here is the beginning of cycle wave three. It's been un underway for about 36 weeks now, and it's showing weak volume and declining ATR. That is absolutely not normal, for, even for the start of a third wave. Third waves should be unmistakable, and they should have support from volume. This wave count does not have support from classic technical analysis, so two major problems there substantially reduce its probability. And that's one big reason why I think gold is still in a bear market. Okay, let's take a look at how the week closed for gold. This week has closed green, the long lower wick is bullish, volume supports upward movement within the week. It's a downward week with a lower high and a lower low, but the balance of volume is upward and the candlestick is green. There is support within the week from volume for upward movement. That in conjunction with the long lower wick at this chart level, the weekly chart time frame, is quite strongly suggesting some more upward movement next week. There was a series from this major low here, there was a series of higher highs and higher lows. And that was in place until this week here when there was a lower low. And now here, this week, or last week actually, there's been a, made, a new reasonable swing low below this prior swing low as well. And so now we have a series of lower highs and lower lows. That quite strongly suggests that there was a high in place back up here for gold. Supported again by the idea of two bearish candlestick reversal patterns at the high. And now price is moving lower as we have been expecting. When markets trend, price will not move in a straight line. In a downward trend, there will be bounces and sideways consolidations along the way. And we can use those as opportunities to join a known trend. At this time frame, ADX is not yet telling us that there, that there is a clear trend. It told us eventually, finally, that there was an upward trend. Now ADX is declining, it's telling us that at this time frame there is no clear trend. It is a lagging indicator, it is based on a 14 week average. It has not yet told us that there has been a potential trend change from up to down because the DX trend lines have not yet crossed over, but they are very close together now and may do so quite soon. ATR continues to decline, my main wave count does expect an increase in ATR as cycle wave C begins to develop some strength. It's still quite early days, or rather weeks, but this is possibly beginning to possibly become a wee area of concern. I will keep this in mind and I will be open to other possibilities and I will continue to publish alternate wave counts. At this time, I have to say that a continuing decline in ATR actually fits the double zigzag wave count better than it fits my preferred wave count for gold. However, both of those counts, in fact all of my counts at the weekly chart level, are expecting this new downward movement for gold to continue for a while yet. RSI is neutral, room for price to rise or fall, stochastics just entering oversold, but if we do have a new downward trend, eventually ADX may, may catch up and stochastics can remain extreme for quite a few weeks. Just because it's entering oversold does not mean downward movement has to end, it can remain extreme and get further extreme for quite a while. MACD is bearish but it's above the zero line so it's not full bore bearish. At the daily chart level, there's this possible complicated head and shoulders, a head with a couple of two shoulders. Here's the neckline, sits nicely along these lows here. It's been tested, uh, but price is closed back above it, so it's not perfectly showing where this bounce is finding resistance. That doesn't negate the possibility of this being a head and shoulders structure though, and I'm calculating a target after the breakout, downward breakout here, closing well below the neckline, with support from volume to add for added confidence. After that, I'm calculating a target at about 1217, which is quite close to my Elliott Wave target for a third wave. There is support now about 1275 and really strong resistance ahead, about 1325 to 1330. There still also may be a bit of resistance about 1300 to 1310 above. Volume is supporting upward movement for Friday's session, that in conjunction with the long lower wick on that weekly candlestick 
tells me to expect more upward movement. I do not think this bounce is done. I think it's got a little way to go yet. On balance volume broke below this support line which had quite strong technical significance. Retested and I thought it was just going to move down the way but it's broken back above the support line now. This line may now need to be redrawn. The next resistance line ahead has only had three tests, isn't too long held but it doesn't have too great a slope. There is a little bit of technical significance in this line. This may be the next assistance to halt this bounce. If on balance volume gets up here and the Elliott wave structure for the bounce is complete and if price comes up to that base channel on my daily Elliott wave chart, I'll be looking for an end to the bounce then. So watch on balance volume in conjunction with the channel on the daily chart for this bounce to end next week. RSI is neutral, plenty of room for price to rise or fall. ADX was telling us there was a downward trend, it's now declining, telling us that there is no clear trend at this time, at this time frame, and ATR declining. RSI, sorry, stochastics in neutral territory again, and MACD bearish, but not full ball bearish, maybe about to get a bullish crossover, but that hasn't happened yet. That's all from me with your gold analysis. I hope all our members are having an awesome weekend.